Hello folks and welcome to another Blue Sun Gaming video. In this one, I'm going to make a war rig for Gaslands. So let's start with a list of things that I used and you might use if you can undertake a similar project. This is the Matchbox truck that I'm going to be modifying to make the war rig. And as you can see, it's got a pretty chunky cabin and a nice long trailer. And there's going to be plenty of space to kit this out with all kinds of weaponry. Now we're going to be using the turret off this tank for the 125mm cannon which you're going to mount on the back of that trailer. We've got some cardboard here. Scissors to cut it with, some matchsticks, and of course, the most important thing, trusty super glue. Then some other tools to cut stuff with. We've got clippers and a Stanley knife. And then of course, your bits, boxes, or bags. Now most of the parts I'm gonna source from an old Orc Boys kit from Games Workshop, and plastic war zone terrain. There's also a bunch of other random stuff that I've just found and chucked in the one spot for occasions just like this. Now I did already search through this and kind of pick out the pieces that I might want to use. Now the first thing I want to do is mount two heavy machine guns, one on each side of the trailer. So I'm going to use this one here, which is pretty much perfect, and then this other one, which is a little bit stubby, so we're going to extend the barrel and that little piece of plastic on the end. And then we're just going to mount them on the side, just like that, with these barrels that I found from the war zone terrain. Now imagine that these would kind of be like side sponsons and spin mechanically. So we're going to go ahead and clip these in half and then trim off any excess bits of plastic. Normally the guns from these kits are a little bit too chunky for gas lands, but because this is a huge war rig, the scale is just about right. That looks pretty good, got both of them done. And probably gonna stick them right about here, right in the middle. Now, just going to go about trimming all the excess bits off these guns that we don't need. Really just taking off the handles and with the orcs grasping it there. Once they've been clipped off, we do need to trim the surface so it's nice and flat. So we've got a good gluing surface from element to element. Right, now to extend the barrel. I'm just gonna clip the end of this off, trip it down, and then glue it to the end of the gun. Now this bit was a little bit tricky and fiddly because it was working with such a small piece, but with persistence, we got it done. And I did glue these two pieces together with plastic glue, which is nice because it fuses both pieces together, giving a nice strong bond, but also conceals any joins and seams. Now we've got both those heavy machine guns ready to stick onto the sponsons. But before we mount those heavy machine guns, I did want to add a little bit of extra detail to the side of the trailer. Because at the moment it's looking pretty flat and boring. So I'm going to use these matchsticks and some cardboard to create a bit of a framework so we can mount that heavy machine gun sponsor on the side. And as I'm cutting this, I'm really just eyeballing it, not trying to be too precious about measurements. Remember, this is a vehicle for a post-apocalyptic setting. They're ramshackled and probably would have been made from salvage materials. So I didn't worry about getting my measurements perfect. Now all those elements are cut, I've placed them on the side of the trailer to make sure it looks good. And when I'm happy with it, I go ahead and glue everything down. And after I glued that bit of cardboard down, I actually realized it wasn't necessary. Because I stuck the matchsticks around the outside of it, so you're not going to be able to notice it anyway. But it did serve as a good guy. Once they're all glued down, I did squeeze a little bit of super glue just on the joins there, give it a little bit of extra strength. And also add a bit of texture, kind of look like it's been welded together. So I did feel that the side of the trailer was quite blank, and needed a bit of extra detail. So I cut a bunch of pieces of cardboard out, and these are gonna act like armored plates. Once again, didn't worry too much about the measurements. This is a salvage vehicle, so these probably would have been ripped off old buildings and just welded and riveted down. I spaced them roughly evenly and then glued them down with that trusty super glue. And actually after I'd finished, I felt like it was a little bit too uniform, so I did stick a few extra little strips on the side. And I will come back later and stick some strips across as well. That's just gonna add some more detail and interest when it comes to painting. Now it's time to assemble these machine gun sponsons 
and stick them on the side of our trailer. It's easy just gluing the machine gun onto the sponson here, this barrel. Now initially I did use plastic glue, but then realized that the Warzone terrain is actually hard plastic and the plastic glue didn't react to it. So I had to use super glue. Now we're just doing the same thing on the other side. This time I didn't use the cardboard as a guide, but I did cut the matchsticks a little bit too big. So once they were stuck down, I just trimmed them off. You know. And as you can see on this side, I did end up adding some extra bits of cardboard and stuck them across the armored plates. Just give it a little bit more detail. But looking pretty good at this stage, pretty happy with it. Now, of course, we're gonna go onto the top and the back here. These doors need to be fixed shut. So for the back, I found these kind of like brace looking things, as you can see here, from the Warzone terrain kit. I just trimmed off some pieces and we're gonna stick them kind of like that on the back. Before that though, I did want to make sure this door was closed securely. So cut some strips of cardboard and we're going to glue them across the joint so it doesn't break open later on. And then here I am sticking it down. I actually did rip this off though because I realized the doors weren't secured sufficiently so I did actually stick some more cardboard across that joint. And as you can see right there, which looks pretty nice, adds a little bit of extra detail, which is always good. Now I'm just squeezing some super glue into the crack just to make sure that those doors don't open later on. Right now onto the top, and I found these pretty awesome pieces from the Warzone terrain kit, some barrels there, um, and this awesome fan, and I'm just gonna stick them down. And this little bit here is gonna serve as a brace for some rockets. I'm sourcing them again from the Orc Boys kit. Then I'm gonna glue that whole piece right here at the back. Now it's time to take the turret off this army tank. Now initially I decided I was going to stick it in the middle of the trailer, but I did have a change of heart later on. I'll get into that in a little bit. I did just trim down these aerials to simplify the shape because it was a little bit busy. I'm just going to put that aside for a second and go ahead and glue all these elements on the top down. Starting with the fan, the barrels, and then the rocket pot. Now attaching this 125mm cannon turret was a bit of a pain. And I did try a few different methods, most of which didn't work very well. You can see there it doesn't have a lot of surface area to stick down, which should make it difficult. And now I'm placing it here right in the middle, but I did decide to move it forward. Off camera, I have devised a different way to mount that cannon on the front. Um, I've raised it up just to give it a bit more surface area to stick down. And what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, weathering the absolute crap out of all of these armored plates because we want this to look like it's gone through the wasteland day after day after day. So I'm going to take to it with a Stanley knife. Slicing and dicing it to create some nice scratches and divots. It was starting to get pretty wavered with that Stanley knife and I was afraid that I was going to cut myself. So I switched to some scissors, which creates exactly the same effect anyway. And you can see that I did actually knock the turret off there. What a bother that thing was to skewer down. But here it is, looking mighty fine with all that beautiful texture. Now we're just going to move on to this cabin and make it look nice and mean. You can't have a post-apocalyptic war rig without a bladed bram. So I use some of this Warzone terrain sprue and let's cut it up to create a framework to stick some wicked gnarly blades on the front. I just chopped the blades up and just stuck them around until it looked wicked. How cool is this saw thing? I don't even know what it is. It's definitely going on. And this massive axe blade too. Oh yeah, that's gonna be nasty. Oh yeah, this thing's looking pretty menacing. I like it. Just one last detail to top it all off. This skull here. I'm going to mount it somewhere on the cabin. And decided just above the windscreen right there in the middle. And that does it. Cabin all done. And 
that's the end of the build. I did end up changing the turret position, it just wasn't sitting right where I had and it felt a little bit awkward. I cut and folded some cardboard up and stuck it around the base of the turret. Made it look like it was solidly secured with armour plating. And I did one more final thing before painting it. After looking at all the texture, I felt like it needed some bullet holes. So I just went ham with those scissors again, and stabbed the trailer until it looked like it had been riddled with bullets. And there it is, now outside for some painting. Now first up I hit it with a black primer, and then I dusted it with a grey blue primer, just to bring out the form. After that, I painted all the metal bits with metallic paint, gave it a wash, and then various layers of dry brushing. Just to bring out all that beautiful texture we cheese with the scissors, and give it a nice weathered, dusty look. Painted the windows blue, laid them up to a lighter blue, and then finished them off with some off-white to give it a little bit of shine. And then to bring it all together, I added some rusty spots and drips. So there you have it, awesome menacing war rig for gas lamps. It was super fun to build this, and I can't wait to get it on the table for a game. If you like Gaslands, we're going to throw down a battle very soon, it'll be up on the channel, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Every view really helps, and I appreciate any feedback that you might have. Drop us a line below if you have any comments, and I'll catch you out on the wasteland. Until then, take it easy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.